What do you celebrate other than holidays and birthdays? Do you prioritize celebration in your life? What if I told you that if you intentionally celebrated, it would tremendously change your life and it doesn't have to be food and it doesn't have to be expensive. I wish I had celebrated more when I was in my job, but now that I'm not working and I'm retired, I can intentionally celebrate even the smallest things. Let's talk about it. In this video, I'm gonna talk about things other than holidays and birthdays to celebrate, how to remember to celebrate them, and things other than food and drink that you can use to celebrate that are inexpensive. I came up with this idea last week when I was getting ready for substitute teaching and it was when I was getting dressed and trying to decide what to wear. In the summer, I wear shorts and loose clothes and sundresses, but then when the fall comes around and I have to put my jeans on or I have to put pants on again, I'm always nervous if they're gonna fit. Like how much did I gain weight over the summer? eating out, barbecuing, drinking, all the different things. So when I put my pants on and they fit, it reminded me I need to celebrate all of these little things. And I mean, that's a small thing. So that day I was celebrating that my pants still fit, but I also was celebrating that substitute teaching was now successful for me. I had no idea. I One of the things I was never gonna do was substitute teach. And now that I've done it and I enjoy it, I thought I need to celebrate that. <laughs> I also wrote a book called Lead with Appreciation. It was a leadership series for principals and it was how to show staff appreciation and motivation in my job as a principal. So if you wanna get that book, I think I have a box of them under the table back there. I'll put a picture of it. It's on Amazon if you are still working in leadership, or I think it would be a good book if you're managing any type of people. But it has a lot of ideas about appreciation and celebration. And it was something that I was known for when I was working. And I think that I just need to carry that over into my everyday life being a retired person because you should always celebrate. I am gonna give you a way to remember to celebrate more often. And I have notes down below my phone that I'm gonna look at every now and then. So if you see me look down, it's because I'm trying to remember all the steps in making this a habit. When our school went through the Leader in Me program, it was based off the Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And one of the things in that book is celebrating daily private victories. The private victory is something that I wanted to make a habit, but I didn't know how to do that. Years ago, I read the book Atomic Habits, and it talks about how to build habits, and one of those things is a trigger. And in the book, the author talked about walking through a door being the trigger. Every time he walked through the door, it was a trigger to either pray or say something that he was thankful for. Well, that's kind of excessive. There's like lots of doors. And just in my house, there's lots of doors and that just doesn't work. But I put the Daily Private Victory sticker, I made stickers and put it on my office door. And then I gave all of the teachers a copy of the same thing so that they would remember to celebrate their daily private victories when they left for the day. That was my, that was my trigger and how I wanted to become better about celebrating daily private victories. Again, that was after COVID and working in public education during COVID. <laughs> Wasn't a lot to celebrate at that time. And it was super hard. I needed something to be able to celebrate when we came back to school in masks and separated, and it was just a nightmare. Everybody wanted to tell you how to run your school, and I needed something to be happy about <laughs> at that time. Another use of a habit trigger for me was about being grateful, and I went through some really hard times in the past few years and needed to learn how to be grateful. Gratitude helped me find happiness again and get through some hard times. My trigger was making coffee in the morning. So I put my journal next to the coffee maker. And when I would be standing at the coffee maker waiting for my coffee to brew, I would write down three to five gratitudes. And I'm not talking like big, deep gratitudes, <laughs> like Jesus and my family and 
I'm talking about little things. I was getting through some hard stuff and I needed little things to be thankful for. For example, non-dairy creamer. I was thankful for that one day. I was thankful for the Crayola markers that wrote calligraphy style because I was making posters for the kids. I was thankful for <laughs> mascara one day, I think. So that's another thing that you could implement if you're wanting to work on gratitude is what's a trigger that you do every day? Could you put a journal or could you put something next to that and write down what you're thankful for? And that's the same thing as kind of my celebration trigger of daily private victories every time I leave my house. What is your trigger going to be? Let's talk about that for a second to be helpful for you. Is it a post-it note on the bathroom mirror? Is it something in your car? When you get in your car, as soon as you get in your car, this is what's going to happen. This is the habit that you're going to develop. Is it seeing a red cardinal. Every time I see a cardinal, of course, people think of loved ones who have passed on. I do that too and think of how grateful I am and something positive about that person. Every time I see a red cardinal, that's a trigger. What do you do on a daily basis that could be your trigger? And put it in the comments because I think this would help a lot of people if they knew every time this happened, I'm going to celebrate. Every time this happens, I'm going to be thankful for something. And doing those two things, I'm not kidding. It changes your life. The three, maybe four things, the four things that I went through that compounded when I put these things into practice. And I'm going to tell you what those four things are. And this is really hard for me because people that know me know these things and can't believe these things happened to me in the succession that they happened. But I believe everything happens for a reason. It's a lot and it's going to be a lot when you hear it. In 2011, my little brother was killed in a motorcycle accident on September 11th. So September 11th means a different thing for me than it means for a lot of other people. Four years later, I was divorced. My husband left. Three months into that, the little dog that I had for 15 years passed away. That year, the only thing that I was trying to keep alive was, and if you have kids listening to this video, stop it right now. The only thing I was trying to keep alive that year was Santa. My kids still believed in Santa and I didn't want to lose that. Two years after, no, one year after that, my dad was killed in a motorcycle accident. And you can imagine I didn't have a lot to be grateful for or I was sad. I feel like there's a purpose for those things to have happened. And I see the purpose of those things now at the time you don't, you don't understand. And I didn't understand. I implemented a gratitude journal and positive affirmations at that time to try to keep going and be a positive person for people at work. That's the backstory on some things that might help you understand my life and my situation just a little bit better. Now that I've shared my country song moment, my life is a country song, I'm going to share the things that I am celebrating currently and then ways you can celebrate that don't cost money and it's not food. Currently, my biggest celebration is 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. This has been a goal of mine for a while, just in the back of my mind. I've been thinking about it. It would be nice. A thousand subscribers means something on YouTube. Let's try to get to that goal. I gave myself a year to meet that goal. So in September of 2025, I had hoped to have a thousand subscribers. And <laughs> now I do. And I haven't really thought past that or what do I do now that I have a thousand subscribers so I'm celebrating that that's like a big celebration for me another celebration I mentioned was fitting into my winter pants after the summer season we celebrate the Chiefs every Sunday win or lose we watch the Chiefs go out to a bar to watch them go to somebody's house whatever but we celebrate the Chiefs good and bad every week substitute teaching I mentioned that no spend September. It is, I have two weeks left in September and I've done really good. And it's not the end of September, but I could celebrate that right now because I've done way better than I ever imagined that I would do in a no spend situation. 
not eating out. We as a family have done a good job not going to, well, the Chinese restaurant (laughs) closed, thank God. And we haven't found a new Chinese restaurant, but we haven't been eating out. Ooh, my oldest daughter's transition to college. The first couple of weeks, I wasn't really sure about that. But this week, she's been at college all week. She's real close by. And I think she's transitioning really well. She loves it. She's told me some really good stories. That's a celebration. Thinking back to the summer, successful gardening. I was not a good gardener. Like flowers. I love flowers totally love flowers. They're beautiful. You can buy me flowers and now I know how to plant flowers and keep them alive. So I am celebrating a successful flower season. I have an edger and I've always wondered how people could get their sidewalks and driveways, the real sharp edges. And I have a weed eater and so I just chewed mine up. My sidewalk and driveway just like somebody chewed it up with something. But I was on a walk one day and I saw a lady that had an edger and I didn't know that was a thing. And now I have an edger and that's like a celebration every time I get to go out and edge things. And it's the red and black one. The tools out there are either orange. I don't know what company. One of them's Black and Decker. There's a yellow one and then there's the red one. So I have tools that are orange, tools that are yellow, and tools that are red and black. So none of my batteries for all of those things match up, but a friend told me that I need to just keep buying the same brand and quit buying all of them because there's a blue brand (laughs) out there too, and I want to buy something that's in the blue brand. Something that I'm celebrating like somersaults is the end of mowing season. I absolutely hate to mow, and I choke my mower out every time I'm out there mowing. It's wet, or I have it too low, and it takes forever, and I just can't stand to mow. I love to edge, and I love to weed eat, but I just hate mowing, so I'm celebrating the end of mowing season. And then the last one that I'm going to share with you is any house project that I have going on. I celebrate the completion of that. I had my gate replaced that goes into my backyard, and it's magical. They replaced it for super cheap. I called around to have prices, and it was going to be a bazillion dollars to have my gate fixed, and I think I paid that much to have the whole gate put in years ago. So I found somebody that charged a cheaper price to replace my gate, so that's amazing. And then my hose spigot, the little nozzle thing that goes into the house needed to be replaced. So I had that. These are like celebrations to me because they feel like such an accomplishment being able to do these things on my own. Now I'm going to talk about ways to celebrate that aren't food or drink and they're inexpensive. First, just acknowledge it, mentally celebrate it, do a happy dance, compliment yourself, Talk positively to yourself about whatever you just did. Just say, good job. Celebrate it. Have a private victory with yourself. That's the first way to do it that I don't think we remember. So when I was substitute teaching, I had to stop for a minute and think, I need to celebrate. Can these pants fit? Balloons. You can, balloon. it is spending money, but balloons are like a dollar at the dollar store. You can just store a stack of balloons in a drawer or in a closet somewhere and then tape them to the mirror in your kids' bathrooms when you want to celebrate something for your kids or tape them to the door, the top of the door in the morning or whatever. But balloons are super cheap if you want to do that. Flowers are super cheap at Sam's or Walmart. You can get a handful of flowers for 10 or $15. And if you, I have received flowers before, so I have vases that I can put them in. So I can just get flowers and put flowers up or give them to my kids. Putting notes on the mirror, writing on the mirror with dry erase markers. If you have them, I'm a teacher, so I have dry erase markers. Writing on it with eyeliner. I have eyeliner I don't use. I've talked about overspending on makeup, so I use my eyeliner to write on the mirror. That's inexpensive. Confetti poppers. You can buy confetti poppers for a (laughs) dollar at dinner with your kids. And I, kids think you're weird anyway, and you just want to embarrass them and make them laugh. So you can get confetti poppers. When your kids walk in from school, you can let off a confetti popper and see how annoyed they are. But it's a celebration and it's worth the celebration. Twinkly lights, 
I put twinkly lights out for the 4th of July. We had the kids invited their friends over and I don't really have decorations for that, but I dug the twinkly lights out. I put those out. Candles. I have lots of candles. You could have a candlelight dinner with just your kids or whoever to celebrate or just put a candle out. If you eat at the couch, put it on a coffee table. And then you, this was, this is a funny one. And I want to try to do this. I just don't know what it's going to be, but you can create like a stupid family trophy that you pass around weekly, make something, spray paint something, duct tape something, glue something together, find something in your house that could be a family trophy that you celebrate every week. And that just randomly came to me while I was coming up with this topic. And that's how a lot of my ideas come is I just randomly come up with something, <laughs> come up with a family trophy. In the comments, please tell me what your family celebrations are. My neighbors across the street celebrate every Sunday. Somebody has a birthday or there's an event every Sunday. Their family has developed a culture of celebration. What do you celebrate? What can all of the viewers of this channel celebrate? Put it in the comments so that we can all enjoy it.